Give us this day, dear Father, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Please have a seat. Let's go ahead and pull out our outline from today's bulletin. And if you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings is right before... Second Kings, right. Good, very good. And it's right after Second Samuel. So you'll see First Samuel, Second Samuel, then you'll see First Kings right there in the Old Testament. This morning, I really do feel like God has a message for you. As I was uh, preparing this, God really spoke to me about the passage of Scripture I was to talk to you about today. And uh, so I know he does every week, but there was just something strong about this week. You know, uh, God was really impressing upon this passage. And, and I think that if you stay with us this morning, you're going to really get something good out of this. We're continuing this look at overcoming life struggles because the reality is everybody struggles, right? Hopefully you've been in your Bible study. You've been looking at, at these topics that, as we've been continuing uh, we, last week, we took a look at where is God when we're worried, you know, when we're filled with anxiety, when we're stressing out, where is God during those times? And we found out that God is actually right there with us, meeting those needs. And today, this message kind of ties right into that. And the topic of, that I want to talk about is, does God, does God care about the details of my life? Now, think about that question, because it's a huge question. Does God really care about everything in my life? Think about that for a second. Does he care about you, for one? Does he care about your relationships with your family, for two? Does he care about your relationships with your spouse or your kids or whatever? Does he care about every detail of your life? Does he care about your career? You know, we live in such a time that it's very uncertain, our careers today, isn't it? There's a lot of people that are unemployed. You know some people like that. Maybe you're that way today. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty, and I just have to ask the question, does God really care about that? And if he does care, how is he going to meet my needs? Because, one, we still have bills to pay, right? We still have responsibilities in life. We still have to make uh, our payments for our cars and our houses or wherever we're at. Does God really care about those intimate details of our life? And I just want to say to you this morning, uh, God absolutely cares about those things. Um, the Bible says that there is not a hair on your head that falls to the ground, and God doesn't know about that. Now, for some of you, that's becoming an easier count for God as the years go by, right? Thanks a lot. <laughs> as you comb your hair, some of it comes out, and God knows that. Every hair on your head is numbered, the Bible says. The Bible says that when a bird falls to the ground, God, is, God knows that. And, and still he looks at us and he says, how much more valuable are you than that little bird? And so I just want to start out by saying God absolutely cares about the details of your life. Well, if that's true, Pastor, how is he going to provide for me? How is he going to work in my life? Well, I want you to notice this very first verse at the top of your outline. It's going to be up here on the screen. And I want us to read it out loud together. And actually, this is our memory verse for this week. Um, hopefully, you've been trying your best to memorize the verse. If you haven't, I don't want you to worry about that. But I would like you to try and memorize this. And so together, we're going to try and memorize this this morning. We're going to actually talk. We're going to actually say it a few times. It's found where, guys? Philippians 4.19. And let's read it out loud together, okay? My God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Now, look at what that verse says. Who is going to meet all of our needs according to that verse? God. My God, right? If you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, if you have that intimate relationship with God, notice what it says. It's not some God out there. It's not some God who's at a distance, who's not concerned about the details of our life. Notice what it says. My God will meet all your needs. Now notice how he does this. According to his glorious what, guys? Glorious riches. Did you know that God has so many glorious riches that we can't even imagine what that's like? 
The Bible says that God is able to meet all of our needs according to his glorious riches. And it's in who, guys? Christ Jesus. Now think about this. Let's read it out loud together, okay? The goal is to remember this verse this week. Here, here, where is it found? Philippians 4.19. And let's read it out with some enthusiasm. Tell the person next to you to wake up a little bit, okay? Just look at it and say, wake up a little bit. Okay. Let's get excited about this verse because look at it. Look how amazing it is. Look at what it says. My God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Philippians, let's read that again, 419. Where is that verse found, guys? Philippians 419. If I said it's the, the chapter is chapter 4 and the verse is chapter 19, where would you tell me the book is? Is that an Old Testament book or a New Testament book? New Testament. Hopefully you said new. Now let's read it out loud and let's try and believe it a little bit more than we have been reading it, okay? All right, are you guys ready? Are you excited about this verse? What do you think? Yes. Okay, let's try it. Let's read it out loud. My God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.19. Now, whenever you try to memorize a verse, you've got to remember where it's located. You know, have you ever done this? Well, there's this verse in the Bible that says something like this, and I can tell you where it's located. You've got to know where it's located. Philippians 4.19, let me just read one more time. My God, my God, your God, will meet all of your needs. Now, he doesn't say all of our greeds, but he does say all of our needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? Look up here for a second. When you put your faith in Christ, when you trust him to meet your needs, God says, I'm able to do that. Out of the abundance of my glorious riches, I'm able to come and meet every one of your needs. Now, I know that some of you need that verse this morning. And some of you are going to need to believe that and trust that verse a little bit more. Why? Because he's your God and he wants to meet your needs. Now, notice this. The story that we're going to look at today about is a man, a story of a man named Elijah. And Elijah was a prophet of God. Elijah was sent by God to, to the Israelites to tell them something. He had a message for them. And the message was basically this. You guys are disobeying God. Now, I, I don't know if that was a popular message, but he went to the king, King Ahab, and he went to him and he says, look, all of Israel is disobeying God. You know, God's made this covenant that if you just follow him, he will continue to provide for you. Remember how he pulled you out of Israel? Do you remember how he brought you through the Red Sea? Do you remember how he provided manna? manna from the ground and, and water from this rock to provide for you. Elijah just goes to Ahab and he says, look, you're disobeying God. And because of that, there's consequences to that. But I want you to notice this. Take a look at, at uh, 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1. It's also going to be on your outline as well. The Bible says, now Elijah, the Tishbite from Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, Ahab was the king of Israel. Notice what he says. As the Lord, the God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will neither be dew, there will, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. Elijah goes to Ahab and said, because everybody's in disobedience to God, God is not going to provide rain for you. And why was rain needed? Because they had crops and they had to bring the harvest in. And that's how they provided. And there was going to come this drought upon your land. And it says, and it's going to be at my word. And the Bible says, for the next few years, uh, it's not going to happen except for my word. Now, if you remember James chapter 5, verse 17, James tells us that this, this drought actually lasted three and a half years. You might want to write that down somewhere on your outline. The drought actually lasted for three and a half years. And if you remember, Elijah went off and he was kind of doing his own thing. And we're going to share a little bit about that. But at the end of the three and a half years, there was this great battle between the prophet of God, Elijah, and the prophets of Baal. Now, who was Baal? It was this God that they, the people worshipped. He was the God of the hearts. He was the God of the rains. 
and the people were the people uh, were calling upon Baal to answer them, but there was no answer because there was only one and true and living God. And Elijah even says.